nemate ništa protiv da sačekamo možda još minut, dva zbog kiše. If you don't mind, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes due to the rain and non-buteaž. All right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the high-level panel discussion organized by the Center for Local Government. Before I introduce our keynote speaker and guests, let me just briefly address the audience in Serbian before I switch again to English. Dragi prijatelji, dobrodošli na tribinu Centra za lokalnu samoupravu. Kao što znate, naša misija već, već dve godine je da pokušamo da unapredimo nivo lokalne samouprave e, u Srbiji zato što smatramo da bez efikasne, odgovorne, transparentne lokalne samouprave nema ekonomskog razvoja, nema demokratije, nema politike, nema gotovo ničega što je vezano za društveni život. Jednostavno, ne samo u našim krajevima, već mnogo više u Evropi i razvijenim delovima sveta, jednostavno političari koji imaju aspiracije za neke državne funkcije prvo moraju da se dokažu na lokalnom nivou, prvo moraju da urade nešto za svoju lokalnu zajednicu i prvo moraju da zadobiju poverenje i podršku onih koji su im najbliži. Nažalost, to je kod nas sve izvitopereno. Kod nas imamo ne samo u poslednje vreme, već u proteklim decenijama jake političke stranke kartele. Nemamo mogućnost da se formiraju ambiciozni i kvalitetni političari na lokalu, a kad i oni se pojave, prosto nemaju dovoljno mehanizama da za svoj grad i opštinu urade onoliko koliko bi mogli i hteli. Dovoljno je samo da vam kažem da u novom sazivu Republičke skupštine čak 105 poslanika od njih 250 dolazi iz Beograda. Tako da se mnogi ljudi, mislim, sa pravom pitaju koga ti poslanici predstavljaju. Ako je njih 105 iz Beograda, a radi se o srpskom republičkom parlamentu, da li možemo zaista reći da su svi krajevi Srbije ravnomerno ili makar minimalno zastupljeni? I pored problema nerazvijenosti mehanizama za gradove i opštine u Srbiji, imamo i probleme koje svi znamo, a koji dosežu sve do Beograda, a to su korupcija, neefikasnost, mala participacija građana 
u donošenju i sprovođenju odluka, tako da mislim da dok se te neke elementarne stvari ne izleče, nećemo moći govoriti o preporodu ne samo naše zemlje, već i čitavog regiona. Ono što smo mi sa našim kolegama primetili takođe, to je da je rad na nekom lokalnom, gradskom, regionalnom nivou izuzetno važan za ono što je našoj zemlji i regionu presušno i neophodno u ovom vremenu u kome živimo, a to je pre svega povezivanje sa drugim lokalnim nivojima vlasti u regionu i zato je Centar za lokalno samoupravu počeo sa izgradnjom mreže između gradova, opština, okruga, županija u čitavom regionu, jer mnoge stvari zaista trebaju da počnu da se rade, trebaju da se počnu da se rade zajednički, da bi došlo do svesti svih koliko je regionalna saradnja bitna i tu pre svega mislim na regionalnu ekonomsku integraciju, ne na neke parapolitičke projekte koji su propadali u prošlosti. Ali je izuzetno bitno da ako neke stvari ne mogu da se odmah reše na višim nivojima, da napravimo neku vrstu saradnje, prijateljstva, razmene informacija, međusobnog gostovanja između gradova u regionu, između Beograda, Ljubljane, Tirane, između pogotovo manjih opština koje nemaju toliko prilike da vide šta se dešava u nekim delovima regiona i Evrope gde se stvari rade na nešto efikasniji i kvalitetniji način. I takođe, za kraj još jedna važna stvar, jednostavno nema ni istinskog približavanja Srbije Evropskoj uniji, što nam je većini nas cilj, makar što se tiče elementarnih standarda i načina funkcionisanja bez unapređenja lokalne samouprave. I bez zaista svesti da ukoliko na lokalnom nivou, a lokalni nivo obuhvata jedan Beograd do dva miliona stanovnika, do nekih opština sa pet ili deset hiljada stanovnika, dok na tom nivou ne uvedemo neke principe, ne uvedemo odgovornost, ne uvedemo transparentnost, ne iskorenimo korupciju, ne zainteresujemo građane da se bave politikom, jer u Srbiji imamo jednu vrstu od ljubljivanja građanja, od politike, čak i gađenja građana prema politici, ali to se rehabilituje, to se vraća kroz pre svega povezivanje ljudi na lokalu sa javnim poslom i kasnije politikom. I meni je drago da u publici imamo i ljude koje lično znam, koji su se na lokalnom nivou dokazali, koji su pobeđivali na lokalnom nivou, zabeležili uspehe, da bi nakon toga imali ključne uloge i u Beogradu i u drugim nivouma vlasti u Srbiji. Mislim da je to jedini recept gde se rehabilituje i demokratija i politika i efikasnost i sve ono što vredi kod nas, ali i u našem okruženju. Tako da ja ću sada preći na engleski. Ko se ne snalazi na engleskom, moćemo da prevedemo pitanje ili nešto što vas posebno interesuje, ali vas molim da radni deo zbog šarenoliki gostiju ipak bude na engleskom. I hvala vam još jednom svima što ste došli, nadam se da će diskusija biti interesantna. Mislim da u poslednjih nekoliko godina nismo imali ovako različite, interesantne i uticajne goste koje sam zamolio i to će biti slučaj danas, će potpuno otvoreno pričati o svemu. Znači, možemo ih, ako nešto i ne kažu, pitati vrlo otvoreno šta se dešava, da li je Srbija dobro došla u Evropskoj uniji, šta oni nama zameraju, šta mi njima. Tako da predlažem da iskoristimo ovih sat, sat i po, da zaista protresemo neke teme koje su mnogo ambicioznije od neke sterilne ili uobičajne diskusije. So, thank you very much for the patience. I will now switch again to, uh, to Serbian. I just wanted to uh, explain to everybody the importance of local governance, not only in a really uh, uh, reviving the politics, the economic development, the efficiency in Serbia, but also in linking 
our country and our local governments with the ones in the region and thus fostering regional cooperation, um, most of all in the fields, fields of economy, energy, but also via that uh, copying the European example for, from 50 years ago uh, to complete the path of reconciliation and rebuilding of mutual um, confidence and, um, and trust in the region. And that's one of the missions uh, of the Center for Local Government. The third one, apart from uh, making Serbia more efficient and more just and uh, creating a regional network, the third goal is to foster the European integration by also improving the local government and showing on the local level what we can do in a more efficient and better way but also copy, copying good examples from the developed European countries. So these are the three main goals uh, of the Center for Local Government in a spirit of which uh, we organized today's uh, discussion. And I'm really honored to uh, have as a host a wonderful guests from all over Europe, but also high level guests from here, from Belgrade. And I encourage you really to have a a fruitful and open and direct conversation. And uh, I spent the uh, last two days with, uh, with Anna and Franz discussing the most important issues, how we can move things forward. Is Serbia welcome in the EU? What can we do better? What, what can we do on a local, but also on a wider level? So I suggest we, uh, we continue uh, in the limelight today in that spirit and really have uh, direct, open, and fruitful discussion. Thank, thank you, everybody, for coming. I hope it will be useful. Now, let me introduce, uh, maybe one by one, uh, today's guests and speakers. First, I will introduce and give floor to Madam Anna Majer. I met her in Segedin, but also in Brussels a uh, couple of uh, months ago. She's extremely experienced politician with a good knowledge of the region and um, one of the prominent members of the European Committee of the Regions, which is, as you know, one of the bodies of the European Union uh, uh, in which uh, uh, regions, municipalities and cities of the member states are represented. Uh, Ms. Majer uh, has been uh, rapporteur of the European Committee of the Regions on Enlargement. And a um, couple of months ago, she wrote uh, a very constructive and uh, detailed report on Serbia. Uh, and this is the first opportunity and uh, uh, first uh, uh, moment for her to uh, present this report to the Serbian public the report has gone unnoticed because it came out before, uh, after the report of the European Commission, but it's as important. And Ms. Majer um, has done a great job and the report is excellent and I suggest you all take a look at it. So Ms. Majer, thank you very much for uh, coming to Belgrade. Uh, and I'll give you the floor, please, uh, uh, give us a main thesis of the report on Serbia of the European Committee of the Regions and your view of situation in our part of the Europe uh, in the context of everything bad that has been going on unfortunately since uh, February, March. Thank, thank you once again, I give you the floor. Mr. Jovanovic, thank you for your kind in introduction. Uh, I, you heard uh, a lot of uh, good things about me. I'm not sure that I fulfill all the expectations, but I, I uh, <laughs> will try to do it. Uh, dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to take part and deliver a speech on this important event, highlighting the work made in the in frame of the European Committee of uh, Regions related to the enlargement process. As we know, the Committee of Regions is an advisory body and its main role is to send opinions to the Commission 
on actual subjects representing the special local and regional point of view regarding that the members of the Committee of Regions are local and regional politicians close to the citizens, so the added value is a special approach. In case of the enlargement, a new enlargement opinion is formulated every year. It is a privilege uh, to be the rapporteur of the latest enlargement package opinion. Uh, uh, being Hungarian, living very close to the Hungarian-Serbian border, only 10 kilometers from the border, it was so important for me to have a say. This is the second time I gained the, the rapporteurship. My first opinion on the enlargement was prepared five years ago. It is interesting to see uh, the positive changes of the five years, and it is sad to see the slow overall progress. Uh, my goal was to be balanced, to show all the progresses and emphasize future tasks covering not only the countries interested in the enlargement, but also the progress and lack of activity of the EU. By my opinion, the enlargement process is definitely not a teacher and student relation, which would mean that enlargement countries are not pupils receiving strict orders and must uh, needs obey. Instead, the progress must be based on cooperation, discussions, be better understanding of the special circumstances, and finally, the result would be to meet the clear requirements of the final success and nothing else. I mean that I disagree to include new requirements during the process. To be frank, during the final discussion of the opinion at the plenary, my opening speech covered not only the progress and the lack of progress of the enlargement countries, but also the duties and lack of past activity of the EU too. At the European Parliament, there are separate dossiers for all the enlargement countries. This is not the case at the Committee of Regions. Only one integrated opinion is prepared with all the interested countries. This is why most of the statements are generally valid for all the countries, and there are only short parts referring separately to countries. In case of Serbia, the final version shows eight separate uh, points out of the altogether 88. Nevertheless, these points are so important and must be regarded together with the other general remarks. And this is a, a, a set of uh, rem remarks. Uh, is it, it is worth to mention too that the closing part consists of important reflections about the role of the local and regional level in the enlargement process regarding that around 70% of the rules are implemented there. So this level is more important than we normally think. I uh, take now the opportunity to ask the government level to take seriously the cooperation with the Serb government level. It is easier to think and discuss in advance than to search later for compromises. Some words about the process. At the beginning, a lot of consultations helped the rapporteur's work, and I'm happy to say that despite the pandemic, I could meet at least virtually a lot of stakeholders on Serb government level, diplomatic level, European Parliament members, and last but not least, Commissioner Oliver Varhei who definitely is the key person in accelerating the process and who I'm sure is strongly committed to a successful uh, progress. The text uh, belongs, the, the opinion, the final text belongs fully only the, to the rapporteur only till the first debate, which happened on the CIVEX Commission level, where the rapporteur receives a lot of amendments from the other members targeting include new points, to delete or to modify existing points. The majority decides. The second round is at the plenary, where there are also new amendments, and uh, we decide with the majority. In light of this process, I'm proud to say that the final compromise is close to my original will. Uh, we could keep the balance of the text, refusing unnecessary blames, refusing additional requirements, which are not parts of the clear orig original frame, and also we could keep almost all the positive statements 
about the successful progress. An example for that is that the positive mention of the constitutional reform finally remained in after debate with clear exp explanation of the, its importance. My work started in November 2021. Final version was adopted in June uh, 2022. In the meantime, Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova announced uh, their intention to join the EU. I have to emphasize, emphasize that my reportership covers the year 2021, so there was no way to include details about their uh, intention. Nevertheless, in the am amendment phase, we included some ref references. As we all see, the geopolitical situation is changing. What is not changing is our geographical situation. The Western Balkans, Balkans is an island within a, the EU, if you, you regard on the map. This is an island in, in, in the frame of the EU, uh, bordered by EU, EU countries. This is a reality that we should take into account. In my view, it is therefore an essential interest of the EU to integrate the Western Balkans as an island as soon as possible into its internal structures. In fact, the Western Balkans must have become a part of the EU a long time ago. For Serbia, it is so important to do it as soon as possible. We are lagging behind and history teaches us that we must pay the price of missed opportunities. In my work as reporter, I try to refocus the attention on this basic truth and give impetus to the enlargement process. In my remarks and speeches, I wanted to bring the message through that we must do everything also in the EU, that the present challenges do not drive us apart. In this present situation, the best answer that the EU can give is a strengthened enlargement process. For this, we need political commitment and trust. We must build uh, bridges. Therefore, in my initial draft, I highlighted the elements that can serve as the foundation of further developments in the EU-Serbia relations. The EU has a set of rules that guarantees the functioning of the institutional and political setup that has been created over the past decades. It is evident that there is a strong expectation on the EU side that all countries that wish to join the EU must respect the rules. But it's also true that lately the EU, EU overwhelmingly focused on the lack of progress in some fields while disregarded major achievements. This is why I focus on, on balancing. Uh, this is uh, by placing a strong emphasis on the achievements too. In the case of Serbia, I regard it as a great success that we managed to maintain the positive wording on opening cluster four after a big debate. And as mentioned before on the constitutional reform, I would also like to congratulate Serbia and the Serbian government for these results as they show clear commitment for the EU accession. These latest achievements are very important steps that will revitalize, revitalize the accession progress. But more than that, entire, uh, these, are the, uh, these are the most important developments in the enlargement uh, dossier in many years and also a sign for the entire uh, region that the accession process works if there is a real political commitment as Serbia shows. As a person strongly in favor of enlargement, I would like to thank the Serbian government for this. Also, I think that governmental cooperation with the self government level is vivid and it is in progress. I should also say again that my efforts in keeping the opinion balanced were overall successful. The final opinion of the Committee of Regions belong to the more balanced political documents of the EU. The final text is a compromise, compromise of many actors. My initial idea to adopt a document with positive wording that strengthens trust and can be a good starting point for further reforms was not entirely supported by all delegates or colleagues. This resulted in mixed language, although still within the lines that other EU documents also reflect. There was a did wording on the monitoring of the progress in Serbia and also some expectations were made on the 
full alignment in the field of common security and defense policy. In the latter case, though, uh, the expectations uh, do not involve reference to the time frame. So therefore, they are consistent with the negotiation, uh, negotiation framework of Serbia. Uh, this is a good compromise, I think. At this point, I do not give you other details. Maybe later there will be questions and remarks and I will have the privilege to answer. All in all, I hope I could contribute to a better understanding of the enlargement countries, including our neighbor, neighbor Serbia, which I am happy to fully support in its ambition to become EU member. The final opinion is sent uh, to the Commission, and it is available for the public. I think Mr. Nikola Jovanovic uh, can also offer uh, for you a copy. Thanks again to be part of this important event as a speaker. Uh, thank you, Ms. Majer. Without further ado, um, I will give floor to Mr. Franz Schausberger, one of the most prominent Austrian and European politician. He is uh, still a member of the European Committee of the Region, representing its land Salzburg, of which he was a governor. Uh, apart from the this uh, distinguished post in his native Austria. Uh, he held many different and important positions in the European Union. For example, what is also important for us, he was a key advisor to the European Commissioner uh, Johannes Hahn when he was in charge for um, enlargement and um, neighborhood policy. Um, before I give him the floor, I will just uh, stress one thing. Apart from all that, Mr. Schausberger is a founder and head of one of the most prominent European institutes um, based in Salzburg. It's called Europe, uh, Institute for European Regions. And we had a pleasure to sign partnership agreement as a center for local government um, with uh, his institute a few minutes before this event, which will allow our joint cooperation mostly in the Western Balkans, but also one of the many things we will be able to send some of the youngsters here in Serbia to do internship and to gain experience is his prominent institution. So Mr. Schausberger, I give you the floor and once again, thanks for coming and thanks for being such a friend of Serbia and of the region. This is the only thing I can <laughs> say. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, uh, Nicola. Uh, thank you for the invitation to this event. And uh, with pleasure, I accepted this uh, in invitation because I always enjoy to, to come to Serbia. And uh, I can tell you last week I have been in uh, Novi Sad, uh, in Vojvodina, and uh, there were also a lot of interesting and uh, meetings of friendship. Um, at the beginning, let me make a few general remarks. Um, and I will start uh, and, and mention that um, it is not the competence and it is also not the will of the European Union to dictate the member states or the candidate states um, how to regulate their internal political and administrative uh, structure. This is up to the countries, of course. But the EU is intensively interested in good governance and credibility of politics within the member states, of course, uh, but also in the candidate states or in the pre-candidate states. Because in many fields, ladies and gentlemen, the local and where they have a regional uh, tier, the local representatives know much better what is the best decision for the municipality than the central government. This is the experience we have within the European Union. In order to reach good governance and trust of citizens in politics, it is necessary that not only national, but also regional or uh, local political authorities get assigned with competences and that they get instructed 
so that they can fulfill their uh, responsibilities. And the bodies at the subnational levels need required also, of course, financial resources to fulfill the expectations of their citizens. For the European Union, it is crucial to have as partners not only the national authorities, but also strong and capable, democratically legitimized local self-governments, which are not only able to use the EU regional funds in a proper way, but also can implement the EU policies. This is also very, very important for a country like Serbia, which is on the way for the European Union. And you have to know almost 70% of all EU legislation, when your country is member, uh, has to be implemented at the local or at the regional level. This is very important and you should always remember it so you can understand why the local level is so important. Um, devolving more competences to the subnational levels requires sufficient local administrative capacity, know-how and expertise to manage the tasks and the competences. Public services on local level are more flexible and closer to the citizens and political decisions are more transparent. This is also very important, but of course the administration has to be able to implement the competencies. In this sense, decentralization is an important contribution to a political stabilization of a country. And I can tell you, it is not primarily for the European Union or for a benefit for the European Union if you de decentralize your structure. It is mainly for your own country itself and for its stability. So if you are doing such reforms, you are not doing it for the European Union. You are doing it for yourself. You should mention this always. Now, let me say a few words about Serbia itself. As you know better than I, Serbia is a unitary and a highly centralized country with one tier structure and of government. This tier, the, the local tier, is composed by about, I would say, 160 or seven, you know, better municipalities, more than 20 cities and the city of Belgrade and many of them uh, are divided into several subordinate administrative units. But now there is an interesting thing. The average number of inhabitants in a Serbian municipality is around 50,000 average. It is the highest number all over Europe in Serbia. Most of the comparable countries in, in Europe consists of much more municipalities than Serbia. Advocates for a reform in this way in Serbia, the local self-government system, point out that Serbian municipalities are the largest in Europe, both in territory and in the number of residents. And as such, they are inefficient in handling citizens' needs and distributing the income from the national budget into most relevant projects. I mean, you know <laughs> better than I, around 10% of the municipalities can considered as big ones with more than 100,000 inhabitants. There are only 6% with less than 10,000 inhabitants. And the current organization of municipalities in Serbia by their size and number is not adequate for general development of the country. country. Thus, it is necessary to uh, reduce their area and the number of inhabitants. That means the number of municipalities should be significantly increased. I can tell you as an example, and my friend Stava from the Austrian Embassy will, will uh, agree with me, we have similar uh, number of inhabitants, around seven million, eight million, 
But you have around 170 uh, municipalities. We have more than 2,000, more than 2,000. And they are very strong. They have, highly, they have high competences and they can uh, implement all these competences because they are very well informed and so on. And so, on. So, so, I mean, it's not necessary to have uh, 2,000, but I can tell you 160 or 70 are really, uh, that's, that's not good for, for the whole country. Um, let me, let me uh, read some, something. Uh, public administration reform is paramount to strengthening governance at all levels. This includes improving the quality and accountability of administration, increasing professional, uh, professionalism, depoliticization, transparency, more transparent management of public finances, better services for citizens, an appropriate balance between central, regional, and local government also needs to be found. This is not what the European Union want, uh, wants. This is what you can read, this declaration, at the homepage of the Serbian Ministry of Public Administration and Local Self-Government. I can agree totally uh, with this, you know, declaration. I mean, now it's a question of implementation, what you have on the homepage of your ministry. Um, on July the 9th, 2021, the government of Serbia adopted, adopted the first time the program for the reform of the local self-government system for the period from 2021 to 2025. And as I said, now it's time to implement it. This is very big because the legal basis or the, the, the plans, this is very important to have it. But if it is not implemented, you will, it, it will never uh, be realized. Let me say a few words about the, the Serbia uh, report 2021 of the European Commission, and I hope that uh, um, I will not uh, say too much what, uh, what, uh, what Mr. Um, Bertolini from the uh, EU uh, Embassy wants to say, but only a few words uh, to this uh, question. Because the European Council granted Serbia the status of candidate country in 2012, you know, uh, since the opening of Serbia's accession negotiations in January 2014, 18 out of 35 chapters have been opened and two of these chapters have been provisionally closed. And if you read this report, you can see that Serbia is only moderately prepared in the area of public administration reform. Limited progress was made in the last years, could have been more. As regards local self-government, the law on Vojvodina's financing resources has still not been adopted despite being provided for under the constitution. Local administrative capacity is still weak and significant disparities between municipalities persist. Responsibilities at local level are still without proper analysis of the capacity and human and financial resources required. Local authorities of Serbia must have the opportunity, and this is also very important, to be actively involved in the integration process because the Copenhagen criteria, criteria require robust local institutions and financing systems in a country. And I can tell you the speed with which the EU acquis is implemented, also in this question of local administration, depends to a large extent on local authorities and they have to implement a lot of reforms. And I would like to stress, and I think you mentioned it, I would like to stress that successful decentralization need an appropriate political culture in a country on all levels of a state. A specific political culture of mutual understanding, of the ability to negotiate, to share powers, 
not to centralize powers, to accept minorities, readiness for compromises. That's what I always say to my friends in the Western Balkans. You have to be able more and more to be ready for compromises, for transborder regional local cooperation. Only on the basis of this political culture, you will be successful in decentralization and to strengthen the local self-administration in your country. Decentralization is not a project of two or three months, of course. It means the separation of powers, and it is not easy to, to give powers from, for example, the, the central government to the, to, to, to the local government, but it should be in accordance with democratic standards. It will be necessary to organize a strong public campaign to inform about the benefits of well understood and also the dangers of misunderstood decentralization and give the people the opportunity to gain basic knowledge about decentralization. And you need all the positive powers, and so I'm, I'm really happy that so many media are here. Uh, you need all the positive powers, the media, the experts, and you should try to get a broad political consent about this question. Be open for, for serious discussion with all people. And I think that, that your institution is very important for this discussion, serious discussion, with all people who are in fear of separatism. Because sometimes, especially here in, 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 in Serbia, if you are speaking about decentralization, about regionalization and so on, people have the fear of, of separatism. I think you have to inform them that well done decentralization is as it could be served in many other uh, observed in many other countries, a strong contribution to stability, peace, and unity in the country and to the satisfaction of the citizens. So you should intensify the contacts also with European institutions to uh, exchange uh, know-how and so on and so on. I think this is also very important. And, and you should give uh, the, the local representatives, the opportunity to exchange experiences with local politicians in other countries that have already gone uh, through the accession process. I think this is also very, very important. So I would like to close my intervention by reminding that Serbia has to find its own way of decentralization and division of powers and for the reform for local self-government. I think there are a lot of examples in Europe which are working very well. And you should know it, you should visit your colleagues uh, in other countries. There are a lot of examples in Europe which are working very well. So it is not necessary to invent an absolute new system Use the experiences of other countries and take from other models what is the best for you, what is the best for Serbia. As the president of the Institute of the Regions of Europe, as you mentioned, Nicola, I will give my support whenever and, and, and however I can. So I come back to the initial question asked at the beginning. Is Serbia on the right path regarding the role of local government? I would say yes, because we are thinking positive. Yes, Serbia is generally on the right track in this area, but as I mentioned before, there is still a lot to be done in terms of concrete implementation <laughs> on the important basics. I'm convinced that Serbia is crucial for the establishment of peace and prosperity in this part of the European country. Serbia, as a European country with a long and distinguished history, a valuable religious and cultural life, with a great richness in historical and cultural heritage, will make a very distinct and positive con uh, contribution to the life of the European Union. The EU regional policy, and there is a lot of money given to all these 
candidates, uh, countries and so on, the EU regional policy and the pre-accession funds combined with the real will, political will of Serbia can essentially contribute to an earlier accession of Serbia to the European Union. That was what I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Franz. And uh, now I will give the floor to the head of the OSCE mission in Belgrade, to the ambassador Jan Bratu. Um, I've had a couple of precious opportunities to discuss with him about the situation in Serbia, about the situation in the region. He's one of the best connoisseurs of the region from the current diplomatic corps. And uh, I will just say that as a much younger guy, I worked in the foreign ministry and in the United Nations, uh, but the ambassador Bratu is one of the most serious and competent diplomats I have ever met. I consider him uh, um, as a friend, as a friend of Serbia, and I'm very honored that uh, he's here with us today. Ambassador Bratu, I give you the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Nicola. And uh, I think you go a bit too far in your praise, but uh, good words are always welcomed. So thank you very much. Um, dear panelists, special welcome to Mrs. Nadja and to Dr. Schausberger, dear participants. The topic of today raises a question. Is Serbia on the right track? Uh, Dr. Schausberger gave an answer, which I agree with. What I would like to talk about is how the OSCE mission to Serbia is working to assist Serbia, Serbian institutions, to stay on that right track and to progress on that right track. All of our mission activities are aimed at supporting democratization and good governance, and we are also working very hard to help in the completion of the public administration reform strategy for 2021 to 2030, including the program of reform of system of local self-government units. The mission is notably providing support in the areas of professional capacity building of civil servants, implementation of good governance principles, and improvements in the system of local self-governance, of which, according to our figures, there are 167 local self-governance, not including the local self-governance units uh, in Kosovo. I would like to recall here that one of the key OSCE documents, namely the Dublin Ministerial Council Declaration of December 2012, which Serbia also subscribed to, reads, and I quote, we reiterate that good governance at all levels is fundamental to economic growth, political stability, and security. Good public and corporate governance, rule of law, and strong institutions are essential foundations for a sound economy which can enable our states to reduce poverty and inequality, to increase social integration, and opportunities for all, and to attract investment and to protect the environment. Against this background, transparency, accountability, inclusiveness, and public participation are key principles that we at the OSCE strive for and support at all levels of governance in accordance with our mandate. And our mandate instructs us to work in partnership with host authorities and civil society to achieve these objectives. Transparent and accessible public services that respond to the needs of the citizens, together with citizens' participation in the development of public policies, are the cornerstones of good governance. And accessibility and efficacy of public services is particularly visible at the local level, as has been mentioned by the previous speakers. Ultimately, whether you have access to communal services, safe drinking water, efficient waste management, these and other issues are what decide elections at the local level. 
And we at the OSCE give our best to provide meaningful support to our partners in the host country on these topics, topics to aim at strengthening good governance and overall democratization. Let me mention capacity building of public administration, including at the local self-government level, is one of the focus areas of our work. And it's again based on Serbia's domestic reform agenda. As one pillar of the public administration reform strategy, the mission supports the National Academy for Public Administration, or NAPA. And we do this in provision and development and provision of several online courses for professional training for civil servants. And I won't go into mentioning these, but capacity development at all levels, not only the central level, but very much in, in the, at the local level as well. A second pillar of our work concerns the long-standing cooperation with the Standing Conference of Towns and Municipalities of Serbia. The Standing Conference is the single association of local self-government units gathering all 167 local self-governments in Serbia proper. And it is an indispensable partner both to the government and the international community when it comes to local self-governance issues, whether it is on policy development, implementation, or representing and advocating for the interests of local self-governments. Since 2018, the focus of the mission's cooperation with the Standing Conference has been and continues to be the new code of ethics for local of officials. Principles embedded in this code of ethics, legality, responsibility, transparency, professionalism, impartiality, and non-discrimination are the aspects or the facets that make good governance possible. We want this code of conduct to be applied throughout the territory of the Republic of Serbia. We support the Standing Conference in the promotion of this code of ethics, also in national minority languages. We do it through capacity building of local officials and oversight bodies. And we, will, we have continued to support the Standing Conference in the development of promotional and capacity building tools. These include uh, printing and distribution of the guide on implementation of the Code of Ethics and the development of the curriculum and learning materials for both online and in-person training of LSG officials and members of local oversight bodies on the Code of Ethics. So far, with our support, 130 local officials have successfully completed the pilot online training. The COVID period was not helpful, but we continued working online. But of course, online is never as good as in person. So now we are back to in person, and we hope that that will continue. But the training must go on. Uh, this year, we are supporting the, the uh, Standing Conference in implementing a new cycle of training and organization of events across the territory of Serbia, promoting the code of ethics, raising awareness of local self-government officials on the benefits of its adoption, and presenting available tools for adoption and implementation. So far, uh, only 30 local self-governments have adopted the code. Uh, the target defined by the action plan for the implementation of the program of the local self-governance system reform is that 50% of the local self-governments should have the code adopted by 2024. We have a lot of work to do in the time ahead. But we will keep working. And we will, as a mission, certainly continue to play our, our part in advocating strenuously for the adoption of the Code of Ethics among all local self-governments throughout Serbia. We have also extended our partnership with the Standing Conference beginning in 2020 to motivate local self-governments in establishing local voluntary fire firefighting associations. Why is this important? Well, it's important for several reasons. Firstly, crisis management is a local responsibility. 
local authorities have the responsibility to deal with crises. And as we've seen, uh, maybe not so much this summer, but in previous summers certainly, uh, fire, fi fire, uh, wildfires all over the Republic of Serbia going far beyond the capacity of national authorities to deal with them. So it is an additional resource at the disposal of the professional firefighters to have these voluntary firefighting associations. And they are voluntary, which means that it's local people who give of their own time to do something for their community. This is civil society. This, these are people who actually want to do something and they are not paid to do it. They do it because they care. They do it because they want to contribute. Um, currently, there are 250 operational volunteer firefighting associations in Serbia. Most of these 250 are in the province of Vojvodina. And we are working together with the Ministry of Interior, the Sector for Emergency uh, Management, to increase the number of voluntary firefighting associations uh, in the Shumadia region of Serbia. And we have an additional 10 local uh, firefighting associations in the process of being established, but of course there should be many more. And they do not only deal with fires, by the way, they deal, deal with floods and other kinds of emergencies. In the same vein, the mission recognizes the value and the role of independent oversight mechanisms and in institutions, not just at the central level, but throughout at the local governance level as well. We're thinking of, or I'm thinking of such institutions as ombudsperson institutions, which represent both control mechanisms and mediators for citizens defending their rights in accordance with Serbian legislation, of course. Having this in mind, the mission supports the association of ombudspersons in Serbia, and we would like to encourage more ombudspersons institutions at the local level. Not all local self-governments have implemented local ombudsperson institutions. We believe that this is an important contribution to not just democracy, but advancing the rights of the citizens. We have been supporting local ombudspersons since 2012 through their association of local ombudspersons in Serbia. And the association has transformed into the association of ombudspersons in Serbia in 2018, composing all ombudsperson institutions throughout Serbia willing to join. And 24 representatives of local and provincial ombudspersons are regularly now gathering, coordinating the work, and discussing topics of importance, including the improvement of the ombudsperson institution and organization. And their continued cooperation with other independent institutions at the national, regional, and international level has led to their membership in the European Ombudsperson Institute that has further evolved and been strengthened over time. We believe that this is an important development, but it is work that needs to continue. The ombudsperson institutions play a significant role as watchdogs, but also help monitor the implementation of and respect for human rights at the local level. Nurturing a culture of non-discrimination and gender equality <coughs> is fundamental for the political commitments of the OSCE participating states, of which Serbia is one and stand naturally very high on the mission's agenda. Placing gender equality and non-discrimination at the forefront of the national reform agenda is important to achieve full equality in society as demonstrated by the new law on gender equality that was adopted in 2021. New laws are adopted, but as Professor Schausberger mentioned, it's all about implementation. And it's, we, it's necessary to have these laws but it is equally necessary to implement them. So we will continue working together with host authorities on implementation. <coughs> we would like to see more female councillors and mayors throughout Serbia. 
In the 2020 local elections, 6,174 <coughs> councillors were elected. 2,299 of these were women, which is 37%, which is, we think, it should be higher. Of 165 mayors and presidents of municipalities, only 20 are women, so 12%. Work to be done, folks. We need to encourage women to engage, not only in politics at the central level, but at every level. On the issue of national minorities, this is also a core aspect of the mission's mandate and work. As you know, there are 23 national minority councils in Serbia, and there are 68 multi-ethnic municipalities in Serbia. Serbia is one of the, shall I say, ethnically diverse countries of Europe. And the importance of providing training to public administration staff at the local level on issues related to the rights of persons belonging to national minorities has been recognized in the latest draft action plan for the realization of rights of national minorities that currently is work in progress. Uh, through joint activity between the mission and NAPA on modules dealing with official use of languages and scripts, the mission has contributed to an Im improved in understanding of the legal framework of Serbia among employees of the public sector. Again, the legal framework is good. The understanding of the legal framework, the information about the legal framework and its implementation uh, needs to be improved. Work in progress. The upcoming population census to be conducted in October 2022 is a very important tool for the state to tailor public policies and services to the structure of the population, not the least, I would say, especially at the local level. And if citizens assist authorities in gaining an accurate picture, and they can assist by participating in the census, uh, the provision of schools, hospitals, firefighting services, general infrastructure can be better planned and better adapted to the needs of the community and the municipality. We are therefore supporting the institutions, namely the Republican Statistics Office, in its efforts to raise awareness of the upcoming census. And we've actually been working for more than a year speaking with national minorities and encouraging their participation in the census. As you will recall, in 2011, uh, one of the significant national minorities of Serbia, namely the Albanian national minority, boycotted the census. And there has also been talk among some of, of the other national minorities to boycott. That seems to be passed, and we expect full participation by the national minorities in the upcoming census. It is extremely important for planning, budget allocation, provision of services at the local level. I mentioned that uh, Serbia can boast a rich cultural diversity, 23 recognized national minority communities, and at this, with this in mind, it is also of great importance to provide support to the various bodies at the local level to contribute to safer local communities. And I'm thinking here of the local councils for inter-ethnic relations, which are val very valuable mechanisms, underutilized mechanisms, that not only should react to deal with uh, cases of inter-ethnic tensions, uh, but also to deal with better understanding of the needs of minority communities in relation to the majority community, and vice versa. It's not only a one-way street, it works both ways. These councils are obligatory in 68 multi-ethnic municipalities, and if well utilized, they could play, I believe, an, an active and important role in, for example, reviewing draft regulations and contributing to local policies aimed at fostering inclusion and policies that reflect the structure of the local self-government in question. Uh, I, I refer to, again, to what Dr. Schausberg had mentioned about the importance of inclusion 
in inclusion, uh, actually he was talking about decentralization, but it's about decentralizing for inclusion and explaining to all parts of Serbian society the importance of working together and finding consensual solutions to very often mutual problems. So we as a mission will continue our efforts together with stakeholders on these issues. I believe that in the past there has been a tendency to underestimate the importance of local government, local self-government, uh, and certainly there are important things to do at the central level, but we should not forget that there are also very important things to continue to do at the local level. Coming again back to, uh, for, uh, to Dr. Schausberger, 70% of EU legislation needs to be implemented at the local level, so really working for professionalization, in increased capacities, and not the least transparency and ethical local government will be vital for Serbia's continued progress on its EU accession path. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Nikola, and thank you all. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Before we move to the questions, I would like to give floor to um, our final speaker. It's Nicola Bertolini, head of delegation um, of uh, cooperation in the EU delegation in Serbia, the main address of the European Union in our country. So, Mr. Bertolini, you have the floor. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. Jovanovic, and very welcome to, to Anna Major, to Franz Schausberger, whom I, I know since some years already, and to Ambassador Bratu. I, I fully, I mean, I, I would be very brief, actually, because <laughs> you gave me five minutes, and indeed, uh, uh, after these uh, uh, incredible speakers, my arguments will be close to five minutes. Now, um, I've been living and working in the Western Balkans for the last 15 years, and I am responsible for having moved the, the instrument, the European funds, towards more projects for, for the local authorities. I'm, I'm very responsible, I, I have to admit. And I continue to do here. I'm coming here, I came here one year ago, and I found that uh, we, are, we are doing a lot, but um, nobody knows about what we are doing at local level. So I went around, I, I met municipalities in Vojvodina, I met municipalities in the east, south, and west. I talked to mayor, I talked to people, and I understand that I leave it to Mr. Schausberger the uh, progress report of the European Union. I would like to be more sincere and concrete. Decentralization is something that the Serbia does not understand. What does it mean? Uh, I, I hope Mr. Mr. Schausberg will uh, redo the, the calculation when the, the census will be done. Because in the local authorities, at least where I have been, young people left. Young people are not there. I asked the Economic uh, uh, Development uh, Department how many people they have, and they have only a few people, and 99% uh, above the, the age of 55. So what are we talking about here? We have to be stronger in understanding four main uh, things. The first one is the role of local authorities, 70% of a key to be implemented, but also there is a, a law in Serbia saying that local authorities should monitor the accession process. In one year, I've not been faced to this possibility, so welcome local authorities to be more proactive and to be given a possibility to, to be proactive. Second big uh, issue I mentioned, migration and young people leaving. So the brains are going away. The old people like me cannot have a, a, very, a very bright uh, uh, ideas. So we should invest in people, in young people. And this is what 
we are going to do more and more from, from now on. I ask about the budgets of municipality. Uh, they, they don't have a, 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 a very small budget. Be, these are big municipalities, 50,000, 30,000 people, 150, 170. I, I discuss with 10% uh, of, of Serbian municipalities. And, um, but I do understand 80% of their investment budget is going to asphalt roads. So having roads could, could have a local minor impact, but does not create innovation, does not create the possibility for people to, to, to be employed. So I visit a lot of our projects and, and I found very interesting people and very interesting ideas. So we have to boost this and we have to take into consideration that, that we need to, to work with the municipalities, with the local authorities, also discussing EU funds and the EU project. And uh, I also would like to, to promote a, a, an idea that uh, I already developed in North Macedonia and in, in Montenegro, and this is create EU focal points in municipalities. There should be a young person below the age of 30 speaking and understanding English who can be our direct focal point. We can talk to these people, we can train these people, we can have these people as promoter of EU at local level. Third point, EU projects. We do a lot. But what we do? We are doing a rehabilitation of a social house, a school there, and another project there. And who is doing for us? International organizations. It's something like in Serbia does not exist uh, the, the word uh, I can do myself. Why should we employ United Nations? Why should we employ GIZ? Why should we employ others? If you can do things directly and we can do with you things directly. We spend a lot of money in this. We have a lot of money spent in cross-border cooperation. Seven countries are, are neighbor of Serbia. Do you know of any fantastic cross-border cooperation project having big impact? Me, no. So maybe, maybe you know, please let me know because it will be interesting. So I mean, there is a need of, of moving towards local doing things for locals. Four and last point, regional development policy. I don't think that in this country there is a clear regional development policy. All, all my predecessors talk about decentralization. Decentralization does not mean separation. It means stabilization. Well, we don't have a ministry for regional development. We have a department in the Ministry of Economy with three people. I was told only one active. I haven't met in one year. And we have to use international organization to, to deliver projects and capacity building. So there is a work to be done. And then I met a, a, an interesting, uh, interesting uh, uh, agencies, the regional development agencies. There are 16, there are a lot of very good professionals. So let's, let's bring together all these and find the way to implement more regional policy at the central level, not to dictate and to impose, but to give the possibility, the resources for local governments to be more proactive in their EU integration path. Thank you, I stop here. Thank you, Mr. Bertolini. It's five minutes extremely well s spent and I appreciate the honesty and direct, direct uh, address. And now uh, I would like to open the floor for uh, comments, questions, uh, dragi prijatelji, nadam se da ste mogli svi da pratite uh, na engleskom ovu diskusiju. Ako imate pitanja, komentare, izvolite, možete i na srpskom, neko će prevesti. Tako da hvala vam svima još na ono što ste došli i ako ima pitanja, komentara, bilo šta što im je interesantno, tu smo. Izvolite. Ja bih vas zamolio da prevedete. Dobar dan, ja sam Aca Vukalović iz 
časopisa je sigurnost. Dva pitanja kratka. Nadam se da nisu lake. Pošto se na papiru u Srbiji sve menja svakodnevno ako treba u kompletu. U praksi ništa se ne menja 78 godina. Mene interesuje konkretno za regionalizam i decentralizaciju. Šta je Evropska unija planira da uradi u Srbiji da bi građani Srbije saznali za ove teme kakve su to vrednosti koje su primenjene u Evropi i tako dalje. Dakle, građani Srbije ne znaju o tome ništa kao i o bilo čemu vezano za evropske integracije. Možda uvesti neku podstanicu radio Slobodno Evropu, mada ovde bi morali da slušaju. I drugo pitanje je vezano za evropske integracije. Mislim i želeo bih, ako može neko da kaže, šta sada planira Evropska unija po pitanju članstva Srbije da uradi, jer je stavljena u tesnac. Posle prekjučerašnjeg, čini mi se, stava gospodina Eskobara, da u prevešću na srpski, Srbija htela, ne htela, mora da bude član Evropske unije. Hvala lepo. the question about what is European Union, so the, com uh, the Commission is, is doing for uh, information um, to the people in Serbia uh, regarding decentralization. And the second question is uh, what's about membership of, of uh, uh, Serbia uh, to the European Union? I think you uh, should start if, if I can add something. So well, what do we do for decentralization? No, I mean, uh, ah, information about the decentralization. Decentralization, as Mr. Schlossberg correctly said, is not something that we can teach, but it's something that we ask the country to work on it because also the cohesion funds, the cohesion funds is one of the big funds that the European Union is using in the Union, will come very strongly once Serbia will be a member of the European Union. And if uh, there is no responsibility for local governments, if there is no policy for regional development, these funds will remain in Belgrade and will be used for big uh, infrastructure, corridors, highway, No, no, I'm saying, yes. Exactly. We have... Yes, yes. We have indeed projects that are providing this type of information. But what I propose is that we will work directly with municipalities in order to channel the right information. I think that we don't do enough. So we hope that the new government of Serbia will be very receptive in working together more at local level. Yes. Only a few remarks. Um, the first thing is we should not always ask what, what can the European Union and the European Commission do. Um, I think um, they do a lot, but they cannot do everything. And they, they cannot inform all the municipalities and the cities and whatever. Uh, I can tell you there are also a lot of, um, um, how should I say, institutions, um, uh, institutes, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, Nicola uh, is, is one of these uh, with his Center for Local uh, Government. Um, then there are in, um, institutes like my institute, 
we are in contact and we, we make, we make uh, conferences. Uh, we invite the mayors. Of course, the mayors should come uh, and they should inform themselves. Um, uh, Mr. Bertolini mentioned one idea, and this idea, for example, is implemented in Austria. Um, we have uh, nearly in, in, in each uh, municipality, we have one councillor um, who is uh, responsible for European questions. Uh, and he gets the information about the politics of the European Union, uh, what is going on, and so on and so on, especially for the for the local level. Um, I think this this would be a very good idea that each of your city and municipality has one lady or guy who is responsible and who gets all the information, and then he he, he is informed. This is a, a big progress if you have in each uh, municipality one person um, who feels responsible for European matters. I mean, my assistant, he's sitting there, was for many years member of the, of the council of, the, of a city in, in, uh, in Austria, and he was responsible for, the, for these questions, and I think it works very well. Uh, there, the, the information are coming from the Ministry for European Affairs in Austria, also from, from the Foreign Ministry, and from the European Commission. Uh, I think this is a good idea, and we should start, uh, I mean, Nicola, we should together think about this and give an initiative. Yes. Um, what I also wanted to say, I mean, here you can see also the, the difference. Um, uh, Mr. Bratu, uh, uh, spoke about the, the volunteer fighter, uh, firefighters. I mean, you, you mentioned 160, I think, in, in, uh, in Serbia, and most of them in, uh, in Vojvodina. I can tell you, I mean, I, 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 I told you that Austria has uh, around 2,000 municipalities, but we have 4,500 volunteer uh, uh, firefighter brigades, you know? volunteer. They don't get any scent. Uh, and if there is a fire, they are ready and, and, and they are coming. So you can see if there, is, there, is, there are strong municipalities, people are working voluntarily uh, and, uh, and, and they are they uh, working together and, and they support everything and, and so on and so on. This is one question. I. I I don't think that I always only uh, speak about Austria, but I, I know the situation in Austria. Uh, but it, it's similar in, in, in Germany and, and, and so on. Uh, so, but I, I want to focus on this idea, one councillor in each municipality should be uh, responsible for, for European affairs. This would be a first big progress. Yeah, and you, uh, you, you spoke about the question of uh, um, accession of, of Serbia towards the European Union. I, I mean, we can, we can speak together uh, uh, about this question. Yes, I mean, as we said, there are some progresses, or there is uh, some progress, but uh, a lot has to be done. I mean, we, 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 we can speak and discuss for hours about this question. Um, I think it is necessary to have a strong will in the government of, of a country which wants to access towards the European Union. Sometimes we have not the feeling that this will is really strong. I, I mean, I, I'm frankly, because it, it gives no sense not to, to say, uh, there, is, there is done a lot, of course. Um, and, 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 and there is another thing, this is, uh, is my impression, sometimes, um, the, the political um, or the, the politicians um, don't think um, on improving the image of the country in the Western European countries. You know, this for me, this starts um, with with radical speech. Uh, it could be sometimes helpful uh, in a in an election campaign, of course, yes. But they don't think what it, uh, what is the result in the in the Western Balkans, how it will 
accept, you know, and uh, and so in the in the Western countries, um, there is the impression, okay, that these always are radical. But it, I know that it, this is not, the, the, yeah. But but sometimes you should also think if you if you say something, <laughs> uh, how it will accept will be accepted in in in, in out out of of Serbia. Um, um, yes, I mean this is only one uh, one point I wanted to mention. There are a lot of of, of, of other points we can we can discuss. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Filip Kalmarevic from uh, news site uh, Nation. Uh, my question isn't directed to anyone, but uh, anyone who wants can answer it. Uh, you spoke a lot about uh, policies that should be implemented on local level. N and some people need to implement uh, those policies. Um, but uh, you didn't talk much about um, some things that I think are important in this, uh, when you talk about local communities. And that is that on local level, many people don't know who are their representatives in local go governments. And uh, in some places, they don't know even who are their presidents <coughs> in those local governments. Mm. And um, one, uh, one, issue is uh, the type of electoral system we have uh, here in Serbia. Uh, what do you think uh, would be the right uh, way to elect people in local governments so that people get more informed about uh, who are their representatives? Thank you. I don't know. You can answer. No, I think it's a very important question. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned several times in my presentation, transparency in governance is of the utmost importance. So how to achieve that? Uh, it's not impossible, even in Serbia, to achieve that. It's a question of will. But it's also a question of what the citizens actually ask for. Um, let me give you a small example. Uh, in... Uh, not, not too far from Belgrade, there is a small municipality, and they've had uh, problems with, I can mention it, but, but or a village actually in a municipality, where they had problems with water. Uh, and I'm not thinking about Zrenjanin, but it's another place. Uh, and local people called together a town hall meeting. And they, the mayor came and he said something and people didn't like what he said about the water supply. And they, uh, they said that they were going to start a court case. Actually, they said that they would hire the mayor's father to be their lawyer. <laughs> uh, and lo and behold, a few weeks later, work started on drilling additional wells for water supply. This wasn't what the mayor said he was going to do at the meeting. So it's not just about transparency, it's also about people getting together and people being able to cooperate with each other in order to advocate for things. And it's not so different in Norway, by the way. I'm a Norwegian. It's not so different in Norway. If you let the politicians off the hook, they will not take your concerns seriously. So people have to learn to cooperate more. They have to learn to work together. Not everyone being the chief and uh, not wanting to work with anybody else. Um, it was mentioned in, by one of the other speakers, I forget now which, who talked about the need for consensus building, the need to, 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 to make, uh, maybe it was Mrs. Majat who was mentioning it. Uh, it's very important. But local engagement, it's not, it doesn't help to say it's hopeless, nothing works, let's leave. <laughs> That's not going to change anything. Uh, so, I mean, I've, since I came here about a year and a half ago, I've been advocating for people to get engaged. And when people do get engaged, according to the laws and regulations of the Republic of Serbia, you can start to see th some things changing. Uh, on environment, for example, 
people went to the streets. They protested. Environment is now m much higher on the government agenda than I think it was in the past. So I think it's about people getting engaged. And then you can, you can complain about the current, uh, the current representation in municipalities. Well, I've al I'm also one of these people who have been working with and in the region for more than 20 years. I remember a time when a each and every municipality in Serbia was under a different party. And there were elections and uh, people didn't vote for them after some time. So that tells me that they may be lost, they lost touch. It's about people being engaged, but it's also about not just requesting, but demanding that the laws of the land are being implemented and that this is an expectation that people have. And then I think there can be and there will be changes also here in Serbia. Um, but this, uh, this is also one of the reasons why we are so, as a mission, we are pushing so hard for this code of ethics because we want these uh, ethical, political behavior at the local level, at every level, by the way, uh, to, to be fully, to be under fully understood and fully implemented. Uh, obviously, this is not something that the OSCE mission can do. Actually, it's not our, even our responsibility. We are here to support your authorities, your structures, in implementing what your authorities and your structures have signed on to as OSCE commitments. Um, and we, we, I believe that, that there are people, there are politicians here who really want to do this, but it's a big system. And there are a lot of people who don't understand the need to change, and certainly not the need to change in certain directions. So this needs engagement. It needs people to continue to ask for their rights to be respected. And uh, we as a mission will continue to work with, in this case, the Standing Conference on Towns and Municipalities, which is a Serbian institution, and local self-governments on best practices in local governance. Foreigners can't do it for you. You have to do it yourselves, but foreigners can help, but only if you want to. And that's the, that's the challenge here. Možemo posljednje pitanje ako... Dobar dan, hvala najljepše. Moje ime je Ana Morokošić i ja ću da se za početak svima zahvalim na njihovim jezicima. Good dog, or tusen tak for your dear. Tusen tak for your dear. Kusten und sepen, Ana. Najljepše hvala, Nikola. Danke schön. Und molto gentile, grazie. Grazie mila. Ja sam... Moj nik je multikulturalna, ne bez razloga. I will speak in English. I speak fluent English and Norwegian and I've learned Hungarian and German and Italian. I've lived in Norway, so I know what decentralization looks like in practice. And I am now currently unemployed because there is no space for me anywhere because I am overqualified. You know, uh, surprise, surprise. I speak too many languages. I know too many things for my own good. <laughs> I know how things work on a local level and on a global level and uh, uh, in different countries in Norway. In I've lived in Norway for 10 years. I have a, a media and communication studies a master's degree from Norway. Uh, and uh, I've worked for GIZ, which was mentioned here. And I can tell you, Mr. Bertolini, that there are already uh, local, um, I think there was 150 at the time when I worked for them, uh, youth offices that are sponsored by GIZ, which uh, kind of are so responsible on a local level to disseminate uh, information on different topics. But those are your people, the 15 to 30 youngsters which speak fluent English and other languages. So this already exists as a structure. I've worked for them 10 years ago. It's not a new idea. It's just whether or not it's being fully implemented or <laughs> being kind of uh, pu pushed to the side. 
So my my comment is more of a like a summary of all that. It's not not so much a question. It's that uh, as the gentleman here first spoke, we have been going in circles for too long, <laughs> without any you know uh, concrete steps uh, being taken. So yeah, I I will not. Uh, I'll try to wrap it up now. And thank you again. Odgovore samo, dođete u centar za lokalno samoupravo. Žarko, ajde, ajde ti još za kraj. I da se rastemo. My name is Žarko Dukić. I'm fan and friend of Nikola and the CLS organization. And I support in any way I can the work. I have some... Personal experiences with the local governments, and uh, I uh, saw that uh, you didn't speak about one administrative branch of uh, local municipalities, and it's called, I think, local communities. There are many local communities uh, of every local, uh, uh, how to say, municipality. In my local uh, community, we had some um, plans for urbanization in Belgrade. And they wanted to present it to the to the people in uh, that local community, but uh, um, we heard what they want to do. It's a very nice place to live, uh, great nature and everything. And they want to how uh, someone uh, in some way destroy that uh, way of life and want to make uh, many buildings because there are many. Um, how to say mafia, you know, want to build buildings uh, connected with the local governments. And um, we had a problem with that. And uh, we organized like uh, 1,500 people uh, signing the, uh, how to say, um, yeah, petition. And uh, we sent that to them to see that uh, there are many people uh, interested in the topics. And president of that municipality was organizing a meeting with in a local community. So we heard the the day before that it, it will be organized. We didn't know about it. Only two of us came, and it was um, how to say um, election meeting for the government party in that uh, municipality. So we were like, "What is this? This is for us, for the people living here." We wanted to ask questions. And um, then uh, they started the yelling at us and we were thrown away. And um, after that, they called police and said that we were violent, so I have uh, court with them and many problems. And uh, we went to the uh, Belgrade, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, hall and uh, we had uh, their meeting with the uh, uh, Belgrade government uh, with um, talking about the urbanization, we said what we think, but we don't know what will happen. So we have, uh, my opinion is that the local communities are a great way to be a connection with the local government and uh, with uh, maybe European Union and others, but uh, we are totally disconnected with the local communities at the same time from the local municipalities. So we, we, we do, what you said, we are doing what we can, but uh, uh, it's really hard. Some uh, uh, non government organization helped us as well with their experience, but you know, if it's uh, lo uh, not a lot of time, especially when there are elections. They are very, uh, how to say, um, um, aggressive toward the people. They think, they say, we will win the elections. I say, I'm not here at any party. I'm here because uh, it's. I live here. I want my... Uh, uh, my uh, place where I live and my friends live, I want it to, to be, you know, the way it is and a little bit better. We want to make uh, the, the suggestions, not what you bring to us uh, where, we, where we can live. We don't want uh, many more cars in our part of the uh, life, so they want to, to bring uh, 600 uh, new apartments. It means many more cars with no more parking and stuff, So and uh, destroying the nature and everything. So is uh, the the real situation. So I think you should think about that local communities maybe as a solution somehow. Thank you. I'm 
mean, decentralization means that more competences are going uh, to the municipalities. But uh, this is not the only step, uh, because on the otherwise, we, uh, you have to, um, uh, you have to, um, how should you say, how should I say it, uh, educate uh, the local politicians. You have to educate um, the, the people who are working in the in the local administration, and so on and so on, so that they are really able to implement in a good way uh, the competencies. Then, of course, they have to feel them uh, responsible for everything what they do, and and of course you have um, to have instruments for more transparency uh, towards uh, the, the the people living there, and so on and so on. So uh, it, it's a package. You know what I mean? It's not enough to say, okay, we make a we make a law, uh, more uh, competences given to the local level. That's not enough, as as we said. All uh, the, the main question is: Okay, the, the the law is the basis, of course. Without the law, you cannot do anything. But if you have the law, then the, the most important thing is, and also the difficult thing is, to implement in in a, in the right way uh, this law. Yeah, and and there you, you need help. Uh, of course, you need help not only from the European Union not only from, from Mr. Prato, but also from some organizations, from, from some uh, um, uh, institutes and so on and so on. And it is very important to, to and, and that we can do, to bring, uh, for example, local politicians from other countries where it, where it is running uh, positively, uh, together with your, uh, with your politicians on the local level. So, but the question is, I'm not sure if they are really interested in such a know-how exchange. Uh, just to conclude, um, we are aware about the problems with the corruption and mafia. I think you were talking about developers who sometimes are doing things that uh, normal citizens do, do not support. Uh, so definitely as a center for local government, we will try to help not only to you, but to everybody who is in need. And one of the reasons that we try to make partnership with our friends and partners in Europe is that we can have support not only in eradicating corruption, but also in doing many, many things that are needed here. So I understood you and... Uh, we from here, we know what you're talking about. So, um, um, guys, thank you very much. Special thanks to our keynote speaker, to our guests at the panel, to all those who came um, at this rainy day. Uh, we will organize further activities, uh, discussions, but only, uh, but also con concrete actions, and hopefully, uh, we will deliver even more in the future. Hvala vam svima što ste došli po, po kišnom danu. Naram se da vam je bilo uh, makar delimično korisno i nastavite da pratite CLS. Mi smo tu zbog vasa neobrnuto. Hvala, živeo Beograd, živela Srbija.